Sharon Glotzer is the recipient of this year's David Turnbull Lectureship for key discoveries and insights that have shaped our understanding of nanoparticle self-assembly. We have Sharon with us now to talk about her theory of entropic bonding in colloidal crystals. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for asking me. I'm curious to know what sort of forces are at play mm -hmm. in the assembling of a colloidal crystal, which I understand uh, is composed of particles versus a standard crystal that's, right. that's composed of atoms or molecules. That's right. Well, on the colloidal scale, when we have nanoparticles, nanoparticles are self-assembling typically in some sort of liquid, some, some solution. Right. And so there's all kinds of interactions that are at play that might cause the particles to attract or repel from one another, and they all have to balance out to create an and a uh, organized arrangement of nanoparticles. And once they do that, we call it a colloidal crystal. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the atomic scale, where right, we have atoms and their nuclei surrounded by electrons and the electrons conspire to produce valency and bonding, and then you get your atomic crystal. And what's so uh, incredibly amazing to me is that the colloidal, part, colloidal crystals made of nanoparticles can take exactly the same forms as atoms can take. In a, in, a, in a regular crystal, even though the forces are, are at play are very, very, very different. And of course, on totally different length scales and time scales and energy scales. Are there any other interesting examples you've come across of how macroscopic systems can form in a similar way as structures on a, on a microscopic or nanoscale? You know, even if we stick to the colloidal and, and atomic crystal analogy, polymers, um, block copolymers, dendromers also can self-assemble into, into many of these same kinds of uh, organized um, structures where they may form micelles and then the micelles are like super atoms. And then this, and those super atoms can arrange into structures that have the same uh, unit cell, um, same you know complex arrangement of the micelles as atoms or as nanoparticles. And across these scales, um, for example, the the valency that is needed to get the colloidal crystals from nanoparticles comes from uh, not just the forces that are in, at, at play, but also the shapes of the particles that also dictate how the particles want to arrange next to one another. And at the larger scale, when you have polymers and dendromers and things, there the, the molecules are more flexible and so they can adapt to different things. And so it, it just demonstrates that statistical thermodynamics doesn't care about the origin of the forces. I also want to ask you a little bit about your work as a in digital alchemy, which I understand yeah. that's basically kind of working backwards using commu computer simulations to try to figure out how to get the structures that you want. Yeah. So, so what sort of materials um, do you think could come from this, and and what sort of applications might might be be good with this work? We called this this uh, this approach digital alchemy. Um, like you said, it's kind of an, it's a backwards approach, an inverse approach. Typically, so so we do computer simulations. We don't actually make any materials, but we make models of materials and then try to understand um, the design rules so that our collaborators, experimentalists, other people can actually make these materials. With digital alchemy, we start with, well, what is the structure that we want to get? Because that structure might have this, the properties or behaviors that, that we're aiming for, for some kind of an application. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, we expand where we allow the nanoparticles to change their shape or their interactions on the fly and adapt to the structure that we want to get. At the colloidal scale, nanoparticles, those interactions aren't quantized like you have in atoms. And so it's a way of going directly to the system or the materials that we need to get the structures that we want. And so this could be for organizing, um, say, quantum dots uh, for, for use in, in, uh, in TV displays, um, for making other types of um, interesting, say, photonic crystals. There's many, many possible applications. I'm excited to see those applications that come out from that work. So uh, thank you so much for, for joining us here today. And I hope you have a great rest of your week here at, at MRS. Thanks very much.